So Nigerian national football team, the Super Eagles, has arrived in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire for the 2023 African Cup of Nations. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the Nigerian national football team, the Super Eagles, has arrived in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire for the 2023 African Cup of Nations. The team is set to participate in their first match on Saturday, January 13th, against the Pretoria Guinea. Fans of the national team are optimistic that the Super Eagles will secure victory in the tournament, aiming to win the competition for the first time since 2013. The 23-man squad, dressed in Nigeria's national colors, flew from Nigeria to Côte d'Ivoire to represent the country in the prestigious football tournament. At number two, the National Association of Telecom Subscribers has warned that Globalcom subscribers can take legal action against the operator for its failure to settle interconnect charges with other networks. Speaking Wednesday in Channels TV, Adeolu Okubanjo, the national president of the association, said the subscribers were being deprived of their basic rights to communicate. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, said on Monday that Globalcom customers will be barred from calling MTN lines owing to non-settlement of interconnect charges by the former, leaving thousands of customers frustrated and with limited call options. At number three, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arranged the former Minister of Power and Steel, Mr. Olu Agunroye, before Justice Donatus Okorowo of the Federal High Court over allegations of fraud. Mr. Agunroye was brought before the court on Wednesday where he pleaded not guilty to the charges read against him. The judge ordered that he be remanded in Kuje Correctional Center pending when the bail will be granted. In December 2023, the EFCC declared Akunloye wanted on alleged cases of perjury and corruption. At number four, the Federal Commissioner of the National Population Commission for Benue State, Patricia Kupchi, has announced the commencement of the 2023 to 2024 National Demographic and Health Survey in the state. The survey will be conducted in 19 out of the 23 local government areas of Benue State. The NDHS is a significant survey conducted by the National Population Commission and it aims to gather high-quality data on various indicators such as fertility rates, maternal and child health, contraceptive use, childhood mortality, gender-related issues and HIV-AIDS awareness. The survey will run until April 2024 and is expected to provide valuable data for policy making and planning in health and social development. At number five, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, has lamented that some governors have abdicated responsibilities to tertiary institutions in their states to the agency. That fund executive secretary, Sonny Echona, stated this when he received Bauchi State Governor, Senator Bala Mohammed, who was on a working visit to his office in Abuja. He explained that although the agency had the core mandate of providing funding for public educational facilities and infrastructural development across the country, some governors establish new tertiary institutions and leave the responsibility of funding them solely to debt fund. At number six, according to the Director General of the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, Adewale Oyerinde, 15 multinational companies have exited Nigeria, resulting in the loss of 20,000 jobs over the past three years. Oyerinde expressed concern about the severe consequences of widespread job losses in various sectors of Nigeria's economy due to challenging economic conditions. He warned that if this trend continues, it could exacerbate insecurity and lead to an increase in child labor. The departure of multinational companies not only impacts employment opportunities, but also has broader implications for the country's economic stability and social welfare. At number seven, the police has arrested six suspects in connection with an attack on the senator representing Kogi East in the National Assembly, Isa Echocho. In a statement, police spokesperson in Kogi State, William Ayer, said the lawmaker was attacked on Tuesday in Lokoja, the state capital, after a visit to the governor, Yahaya Bellu. The senator had visited the governor alongside Senator Sunday Karimi of Kogi West, Zakaria Idris of Ida Federal Constituency, 
Sami Egidi of Ajokuta Federal Constituency, Abdul Rahim Danga of Okehi and Adavi Federal Constituency, among others. Echocho was said to have been attacked after he and others left the governor's office. The police said the arrested suspect would be charged to court to serve as deterrent to others. At number eight, Nigeria and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have agreed to enhance collaboration for the development of solid minerals in Nigeria. The decision was reached during a bilateral meeting between the Nigerian Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Daily Aleke, and the Saudi Arabian counterpart, Banda al Khorayef, held on the sidelines of the Future Minerals Forum in Riyadh. Aleke highlighted the significance of partnerships in the global energy transition and emphasized Nigerians' abundant availability of critical minerals. This partnership aims to strengthen cooperation between the two countries in the development and utilization of Nigeria's solid mineral resources. At number nine, the World Bank has projected that Nigeria's economy will grow by 3.3% in 2022, indicating a positive outlook. This growth rate surpasses the estimated global average of 2.3%, but falls slightly behind the sub-Saharan African average of 3.8%. The projection reflects the World Bank's confidence in Nigeria's economy following reforms in the downstream oil and foreign exchange sectors. The key sectors expected to drive growth include agriculture, construction, services and trade. The World Bank also predicts a gradual easing of inflation and an increase in fiscal revenue due to structural reforms. Overall, the projections suggest potential opportunities for growth and development in Nigeria. Finally, at number 10, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, is set to begin hearing arguments on Thursday 11th January regarding accusations against Israel for alleged genocidal acts in Gaza. The court announced that a public hearing of oral arguments will commence with South Africa on Thursday and continue with Israel on Friday, with each party given three hours to present their case. South Africa initiated the proceedings against Israel on December 29th, accusing it of committing genocidal acts in Gaza. In the 84-page document submitted to the court, South Africa claimed that Israel's actions and omissions are intended to destroy a significant part of the Palestinian national, racial and ethnic group in the Gaza Strip. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.